Twas at the breaking of the day as wandered I in hearts and moan. All in the merry month of May by Huntley Banks myself alone. The chirping finch, the warbling thrush, the blackbird trilling as he sang. The wildwood vale all in the rush till all the forest pealed and rang. All in the longing as I lay on mosses neath the spreading tree, espied I then a lady fay come riding o'er the bonny lee. And though I sit until doomsday, my fluent tongue to twist and try, I could not hope in any way to tell what vision met my eye. Her palfrey was a dapple grey, a finer mount you never did see. Her saddle shone so bright and gay, all set with pearls down to her knee. I looked upon her in a daze, for neath the raiment she had on, reflecting all the sun's glad rays, I swear her skin it fairly shone. Her fair hair o'er oh, her head it hung as she rode o'er the bonny lee. A while she blew, a while she sang, with no one to observe but me. There was no man to hear her noise save Thomas as he lay alone, whose eyes appraised her graceful poise, whose heart at once was all undone. They were as white as snow that loosely held her rapture's trace. Her greyhounds ran in even flow in concert with that lady's pace. Her hunting horn she blew with pride on either flank, hung tinkling bells, golden lyre set at her side, of which the minstrel's rapture tells. I lay there to behold that sight from underneath the spreading trees. Said Don is very great in tight, that fair the child that died for me. If I speak with that lady bright, I trow my heart should brack in three. But I will go with all my might to meet her at the Eildon tree. Thomas gladly up he rose and bounded o'er the hill so high. If it be as the story says, he met her at the Eildon tree. He bent before her on his knee, all underneath the greenwood spray. Lovely lady, do on me, O Queen of Heaven, as well ye may. Then answered back that lady bright, True Thomas, let such phrases be. For Queen of Heaven, I am not, I'd never claim such high degree. For I am of a milk country, where I am held most high in praise. When I ride o'er the bonny lee, my ratches cleave to my device. If thou be held most high in praise and ride all o'er the bonny lee of love, thou also must be wise, then give me leave to lie by thee. But she said, Thomas, tell me why I'd fain come down to lie with thee, to lose my virtue in your eye. I beg thee, Thomas, let me be. O oh, lady, shouldst thou pity me, forever shall I with thee dwell, and hear my troth thy plight to thee, whether thou goest to heaven or hell. Man of mould, thou wilt me mar, albeit thou shalt have thy will, but know it well, thy thrust be war, for all my beauty thou shalt spill. Down then lit that lady bright all underneath the greenwood lee, and if the tales remembered right, he seven times we her made free. She said, Thou lovest well thy play, what bird in bower could dwell with thee? Thou marrest me this lingering day, I tell thee, Thomas, let me be. Thomas leapt up with a shout as he beheld that lady fair, for horror seemed her eye was out, and on her head such loathsome hair. But all her clothing neighed away, her naked body in its stead was fifty hideous shades of grey, all black and blue as beaten lead. Then Thomas cried, alack, alas, indeed this is a dreadful sight, how thou art faded thus in face that shone before like sunshine bright. On every side he looked about, but saw no place that he might flee. She was so haggard, grey and stout, he felt the devil she must be. But she said, Thomas, don't displease, for fiend of hell I'm surely none. Albeit now I'm ill at ease and suffer pains for what we've done. You've pledged your troth, you've bound your hog, for seven years you'll share my life. You'll serve your queen in Tiernanog, then hold your tongue and cease your strife. 
Take now your leave of sun and moon, the leaf that springs from every tree. For seven years you will be gone, and middle earth you shall not see. Alas, he cried, my heart is dust. I trow my act should wage me care. My soul to Jesus I entrust, where'er on earth my bones shall fare. She led him down a tailed and hill all underneath the greenwood tree. For three long days and three long nights he trudged through red blood to the knee. And he saw neither sun nor moon, but heard the roaring of the sea. At last he cried, let help come soon, for want of food I think I'll die. They came then to an orchard fair, where luscious fruit bore every tree. Fair and apple right they were, figs and grapes and sweet cherry. The poppin jay, the nightingale, canaries flitting tree to tree. The chatter of the orchard fell, collapsing into unity. Thomas reached out with his hand, with hunger he was nigh on faint. But she said, Thomas, let it stand, or else the fiend will thee acquaint. If ye pluck fruit, the sooth to say, your soul goes out to the fires of hell, and comes not out until doomsday, but there in pain shall ever dwell. She said, Now, Thomas, take not fright, and lay thy head upon my knee, and thou shalt see the fairest sight that e'er saw man of thy country. Thomas did as he was bade, a sigh of yielding joy he heaved. His head upon her knee he laid, his longing for the while relieved. See ye now yon simple way that's set amongst the distant hills. That's the path the sooth to say for restless souls to break their wills. And see ye now yon narrow way that lies beneath the distant rise. That's the path the sooth to say to all the joys of paradise. And see ye now yon desolate way that's set amongst the weary plain. That's the path the sooth to say where all damned sinners writhe in pain. But see ye now yon citadel that glitters high upon the green. Of town and tower it bears the bell, on earth its like was ne'er yet seen. In faith to Thomas there I dwell, my lord's the king of this country. You'd better burn, for I in hell, than he should learn ye lay wi' me. So when ye walk wi' me this way, I trow a courteous man ye be. No matter what to you they say, you speak no word except to me. My lord waits in a mighty hall with thirty gallant knights and three, and I will say in front of all, I took your tongue at the elden tree. Thomas stood as still a stone as he beheld that lady fair, who once again shone like the sun and wondered at her golden hair. Said Thomas, Lady, what delight to live to see this happy day. For now thou art so fair and bright, whene'er thou art so old and grey. I beg thee, Thomas, only tell, sweet lady, if thy will it be. At Eildon, when thou wert not well, I trow t'was not described to me. And had it not been so, the certain sooth I shall detail. I had as well myself to go into the burning fires of hell. My lord, he needed but to sniff. Who is the king of this country? And straight away he'd caught the whiff of all the things I did with thee. Into that hall they boldly went with Thomas walking at her side. Ladies came and lithely bent their knees as they did curtsy wide. Harp and fiddle they did play, the fife and drum, the faltery, the flute, the bagpipe, singers, fay, all manner of fine minstrelsy. There 
was feasting merry games, lords a dancing three by three. Ushka bay, a comely dame's feats of strength and archery. Thomas watched his heart a thud as forty hinds were carried in, the greyhounds lapping at their blood, the cooks with knives to flay their skin. So more in that place than word or phrase could ever tell Until one day his lady says True Thomas, we must say farewell My lady, I've but lately come My servitude is in arrears True Thomas, she just laughed at him In Tiernanok that seven years must make haste your ways to end and take your leave of this country for on the morn shall come the fiend among our folk to claim his fee well do i know that demon's way he'll crave your soul so couth and bold thus never shall your queen betray her own true thomas man of mold she took him out at Aildon Hill, all underneath the greenwood spray, by Huntley banks where the bun flows still, all in the merry month of May. The chirping finch, the wobbling thrush, the blackbird trilling as he sang, the wild wood fail all in a rush, till all the forest pealed and rang. Thanks for listening.